views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm speaking to you today from a cloudy drizzly seattle here at hubbard radio on 1150 a.m kknw you might be listening in connecticut rhode island or new york on wblq am 1230 radio on one of the 35 stations in Australia or anywhere around the world through the Internet on Transformation Talk Radio or perhaps in iTunes or com after the fact. But I tell you, wherever you're joining us from today and whenever you're joining us, you're going to be really glad you did because I've got one of my favorite guests who's been on the show before. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, yeah he is. He really is in so many ways. And we'll get into that in a minute. I like, <laughs> I like to tease people a little bit, not let you know quite yet. Um, but he is going to be talking about how to take the chaos and confusion and help you create clarity and direction. But before we get into that, I want to say hello to my better half here in the studio who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Hi, Benny. So I can, I can see the green grass through the forest. This is what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or is that and, a bad analogy? Well, I, I don't know. I think that— Well, I can't part the sea. I'm not that, that cool. You're not? I'm not that. I, I wish I had power like that. It'd be amazing. I probably wouldn't even be here right now. <laughs> oh, perhaps we all have power like that. This but is we're true. Just, I, I we're, should. Yeah, we're just, you know, I, and I don't mean that in a sacrilegious way. I think that we are far more powerful oh, yeah. than we understand or know or have even begun to tap into. I just want to be like Moses, like, oh, <laughs> just walk across. Yeah. I like to do that, too, as long <laughs> yeah, as I don't yeah. have to sing at the same time, Benny. <laughs> right. Can I have your own personal uh, track there, your voice track? Uh, you know, whether we're talking about the the forest, the trees, or the grass in there, they're in. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, try to make something from that. I, I don't. Well, that was terrible. <laughs> we, we're all on our journey <laughs> Thank you. through it and looking for beauty, for inspiration, and direction. And our guest today, he's he's great at creating not only a, 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 a sort of a illumination of truth, but also at helping us find the purity and inspiration within. And the person I'm talking about is Dr. Eldon Taylor. He is a New York Times bestselling author. And he is, he's, he's let's see, he's, he's written 14 books. My goodness, Benny, it's up to 14 now. And over 300 audio and video personal motivation programs. Um, some of his bestselling books include, I believe, When What You Believe Matters, Mind Programming, from persuasion and brainwashing to self-help and practical meta- metaphysics. Another one is, what does that mean? Exploring mind, meaning, and mysteries. Another one is, what if? The challenge of self-realization. And, of course, there's the New York Times bestseller, Choices and Illusions, which he has recently revised, expanded, and updated. And he is the host of the popular radio show, Provocative Enlightenment. He's the inventor of the patented and scientifically proven inner talk technology, the founder of Progressive Awareness Research Incorporated, and he's appeared in numerous films, television, radio shows, and he's a regular ghost on a regular guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Nury, which apparently he was last night as well. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Dr. Eldon Taylor. Hi, Eldon. Hello, I'm I'm doing wonderful, Christine. How about you? I'm I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. No, it's you know, indeed my pleasure. Call out to KKNW. They host my show, too. Yes, I know. I love them. They're great folks. Yeah, yeah. And we're so grateful to have you be a, a, a part of the team here because you've got such important messages. And, you know, Eldon, the last time you and I talked on air, we were talking about your last book, Gotcha. And it was 
that that book sort of illuminates so much, and yet it feels to me like we're at a stage now where even some of that stuff's getting blown up out of the, off the roof. It's kind of like we have gotten to the stage where we have greater and greater illumination of the darkness. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. I suppose you know uh, we have uh, the NSA and CIA testify. Uh, before Congress, that they would never spy on America, and along comes Snowden, and uh-huh. we discover that, well, that's false to fact. Right. Uh, they lied. Um, then we have, you know, uh, Vault 7, the latest WikiLeaks uh, yeah. disclosure, or the CIA's use of, you know, everything from your Samsung TV watching you to your mm. smartphone. Uh, and, of course, you know, I think Rand Paul's correct when he says America is no longer going to trust uh, government after this most recent disclosure. Right. Um, we have people that are saying, well, yes, but we don't use that against Americans. Mm-hmm. But then we have WikiLeaks informing us that, the, you know, the dump that they've done is not even 10 percent of what they have. Right. Uh, and when these folks say no, we didn't use it on American citizens, that that's just false to fact. So I think the bottom line comes down to this. Most people are unaware of all the studies that have been carried out by the government on American citizens without their consent, uh, ranging from the the stuff that we see in these vapor trails in the sky uh, to actually spraying toxic gases using the fog in San Francisco to disperse it to see if fog could be used as a, you know, weaponized means of dispersing a biological agent, Mm -hmm. which led to the death of a man who then sued, only discovered that the court said, no, the government not only has the right to do that, but they're immune from a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So people... People do not understand that billions and billions of dollars have been spent by the advertising world, um, marketing uh, experts, uh, Mm -hmm. and governments to understand uh, just exactly how to plumb your subconscious. Absolutely. And furthermore, they fail to recognize that it's the subconscious that's doing their thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago... Christine, Benjamin Libet, using cortical, using a multicranial EEG, looked for the cortical evoked potential, the so-called P300 wave, and discovered that it was, before any conscious activity, this P300 wave preceded it out of areas in the brain known to be unconscious. And that triggered lots of conversation about, well, if the unconscious is doing the thinking, if right. it's what's really, you know, precipitating all action, uh, what's free will? Mm-hmm. Today, using functional magnetic resonance imaging, we know watching the brain lifetime that if I give you a problem to solve, and in your right hand you have a button that maybe it's yes or a or uh, true, and in your left, uh, another one that is the opposite, false or no, et uh-huh. cetera, right. that a technician watching your brain make that decision will accurately record on average what you're going to do before you know it by six seconds. Wow. Six seconds in advance of you having the decision known to your conscious mind, mm-hmm. he has recorded what your decision is. In other words, it is the subconscious mind and all that programming that we have taken on board throughout our lifetimes that predisposes our every action, mm-hmm. our every ambition, our every every word that we speak. Yeah. It, years ago, Edward Bernays, nephew of Sigmund Freud, uh-huh. looked at Uncle Freud's work and said, Wow, you know, if we could just use this understanding of of these subconscious uh, functions and motivations, we could get people to do what we wanted them to do because they thought they chose to do it. Uh He pioneered what was called scientific marketing. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and Propaganda, in, yes. <laughs> yeah, and in those days, of course, scientific marketing was all about, uh, you know, a biofeedback means, maybe a blood pressure cuff or a galvanic skin meter. Uh-huh. Uh, today, we call it neuromarketing. So using fMRI, marketers learn that if you show a smoker the Surgeon General's warning on a pack of cigarettes, uh-huh that it elicits a response in the reward centers of the brain. Oh, dear. Which causes the smoker to want to smoke more. Right. Message back to the tobacco companies, put it on both sides of the pack and make Uh it bold and maybe, you know, color it red so it gets noticed right away. Interesting. There's interesting drives that we have. This one, of course, is is tweaking a Thanatos drive, but... We have studies where we we take a, 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 a beautiful woman, scantily clad, mm-hmm. maybe in a bikini with high heels, and we drape her over an automobile. We show men five different automobiles, mm-hmm. our brand new, different colors, and she's on one. And we ask them to tell us which one's the fastest. Invariably, they'll choose the one that the model's on. Right. right. We'll bring them back in a week. Put them on a different car, same five cars, maybe different colors, but uh-huh. put her on a different car, and again, they'll choose the one she's on. And when you point out to them that they're making a decision based on this woman, they'll deny that. Mm-hmm. They'll rationalize away why, you know, they chose a different car. Oh, I didn't notice the baffle on the hood. Or, oh, no, look at the size of the wheels. I, I, I missed that last time. It's all rationalization. What they yes. fail to understand is that there is an arousal factor associated with a scantily clad woman looking so seductive over this automobile. And it is the arousal that is giving rise to their judgment. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So go ahead. um, We're going to have to go to a quick break in a moment. But, you know, you're talking about a whole lot of manipulation and mind control of one sort or another. And I know in our society right now, we're having a lot illuminated for us about how things are not as we had believed. And when we come back, Eldon, I'm going to want you to share with our listeners ways in which we can take this, this chaos that we're living in right now, this, this sort of breaking through the illusion, and shift ourselves, shift our own minds so that we can create different decisions that are based on our authentic selves instead of being manipulated by others. More with the wonderful Dr. Eldon Taylor here in just a few moments. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two M's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 What is a brilliant culture? And how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you design a culture that is authentic, innovative, and successful. Learn how to create change with Cultural Brilliance Radio, the DNA of organizational excellence, and Claudette Rowley. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit ClaudetteRowley.com. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. This is Peggy Snow, practitioner at Stellar Reflections with a Stellar Reflections Minute. So many people these days are trying to find ways to relieve their stress. What happens to our breathing when we're feeling overwhelmed and stress? When we tune in, we realize that we're either holding our breath or taking very shallow breath. To signal the body that all is well, which most of the time it is, sometimes all that is needed is a nice, deep breath to break the cycle. First, exhale to get all the stale air out by engaging the abdominal muscles and blowing gently. Next, take a nice full breath in, feeling it fill your body all the way down to your hips. Release fully and enjoy the freedom of movement. Notice how your body feels. Do you feel refreshed? Calmness is only a breath away. This has been a Stellar Reflections Minute. For more information about what we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. Benny loves to pick out the perfect it's music, like I need to go car shopping, lyrics you know? that <laughs> relate to what, what was being talked about. So, yes. Women in cars, got to go find some. And we're talking to the, the wonderful <laughs> Eldon Taylor. And Eldon, okay, so it's very clear from so much of what you've taught us through your books, through your radio program, and through your, your speaking engagements about how we have others who are controlling that subconscious and it's not just bad news, though, is it? There, you, 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 talk, you also talk about ways in which we can empower ourselves. How do we get ourselves out of the situation where others are pulling the strings, so to speak? Well, you know, the first thing that we have to do, Christine, is we have to become mindful. And I mean mindful in the sense not of meditation. Uh, meditation is uh, an excellent form for... Uh, many things, including, you know, evaluating your own thoughts. But I mean Mm -hmm. mindful in the sense that I'm paying attention to everything that comes in or through my mind. You know, we have some 50,000 thoughts a day. Uh If you're, you know, in the computer world, you understand G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. Well, (laughs) you know, for all intent and purposes, if you listen to your self-talk, I think of it as ANTS. Uh-huh. ANTS, an, an acronym for automatic negative thoughts. Yes. So these 50,000 thoughts that I have coming through my my head every day, coming into my mind, uh, for the most part are all negative. So I just got these ANTS crawling all around. Mm-hmm. Now, if I stop for a moment and I become mindful of these thoughts, mindful not in a judgmental way. That's Uh critically important. Mindful in an accepting way. I have the thought come in. Uh, It's it's what we think of as an aberrant thought. I don't think there's any such thing as aberrant unless you happen to be a sociopath or Uh a psychopath. Right, right. Because we just, we all have thoughts that, you know, we want to think, oh no, I don't want to think that. Oh, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not a good thought. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have been enculturated in such a way that we deny these things. Mm-hmm. So as Robert Bly says in his wonderful little book, a little book on the human shadow, we have these long bags that we carry behind us. Uh-huh. So, you know, little Johnny is pulled off by the teacher in kindergarten. You know, Johnny, you're not supposed to get angry. Showing anger is just not good, Johnny. Right. I don't want to see you ever get angry again in this classroom or I'm going to ba 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 ba. And Martha, 
you should not behave that way. Mm -hmm. You know, so we get all this no, don't stuff. We get it from our parents. We get it from the teachers. We we begin to deny our emotions. We begin to become inauthentic as to who we are. It's like emotions are horrible unless they're the positive ones. You know, (laughs) you smile, Uh, you give somebody a hug. There's a lot of that out there, Eldon, and it drives me nuts to, to have this judgment about the positive versus negative emotions. That's right. Uh, you know, emotion is an energy. Uh-huh. So in comes this, this this emotion, this aberrant thought, you know, and it's, it's okay, what should I be doing with that? Well, I shouldn't be putting it into this long bag and denying it mm-hmm. because one day what will happen is maybe I'll have a bad day at the office. I might get cut off in traffic, and, and you know, when I get home, I'm just not going to be able to hold it anymore. Right. I'm going to lose it on my children or on my, my spouse. And mm-hmm. and then I'm going to say to myself, why did I do that? You know, and but I'm going to continue doing it until I become aware of these motions. So when this thought comes in, you stop. Mm-hmm. I wonder where that came from. Mm-hmm. When was the first time I had a thought like that? Right. It, 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 is this something that I want to think why would I be thinking this now? Mm-hmm. How how might I change the context? Let me give you an example. Okay. You're in 5 o'clock traffic. You've got tickets to the theater. You were caught late at the office. You're racing home to pick up your spouse. You don't want to be late. Uh-huh. And as you're coming into the freeway traffic, somebody just cuts in front of you, forces you to slam your brakes. And what's your reaction? <laughs> Almost always, you're on the horn. Maybe you're wagging your middle finger. Uh-huh. You're cussing. <laughs> what you just did was see what you perceive to be a threat. I don't mm. know why you think it's a threat, but you see it as a threat. Uh-huh. And I, I said that facetiously. Yeah. But you see it as a threat. Bang! The neurochemical cortisol hits the system. Now, mm-hmm. cortisol accumulates, you know, and it does a good deal of damage to the body. Right. It isn't. It isn't one of those things we flush easily. Okay, in comes the adrenaline, because now I'm mad, right? Uh uh Now, look, going through life ought to be about how I optimize my life, the quality of my life. Uh So here's the cortisol, here's the adrenaline. I have now just shut down the optimal operation of my immune, my endocrine, and my autonomic nervous system, the ANS. They're no longer working the way they should. And, you know, in this anger and rage, I have no way to really vent it. I'm going to carry it up for a while. I may even take it home and take it out. What if I change the context? I willfully, mindfully say the next time somebody cuts in front of me, I am going to just imagine, because I don't know, Mm -hmm. that they have a small child in the backseat of the car. Right. And that child is bleeding. Uh Uh-huh. And it needs emergency help. Right. My goodness, I'd step on the brake to let him in. Yes. Oh, please, hurry, hurry right on. And all of a sudden, by changing just that context, mm-hmm. I change how the thought, how my emotions respond to the thought. Let, right. me, let me give you another yeah. example. Yeah. You pull up behind that brand new Ferrari. You've always wanted one. My, look at that gorgeous car. It's the color you want, etc. Uh-huh. But. You don't believe you deserve it. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? I wonder what that cat did to get that car. Yeah. You know, yeah. probably one of those Wall Street bankers. I wonder how many people he screwed in order to, <laughs> you know? All that, that that's judgment. That's what you yep. think. Yep. When you do that, you push that car away from you. Yes. You're really saying to yourself, I don't deserve it. I don't want it. Because, look, if the only person that will drive it is somebody you think is a crook, well, you don't want to be a crook. So you Absolutely. Just right. pull you, up you won't manifest that it. car and say, wow, good for you. That's for me. Uh-huh. And now suddenly you've changed the context again. The, it, it becomes an attraction, the kind of thing that you might one day actually own right. as opposed to push it away. Right. Context and, is everything. Yeah. And, and you know, I've found myself um, shifting the way I am in traffic. I mean, absolutely, if I have to slam on my brakes, the adrenaline goes, a curse word might come out. But then I, I'm quicker to, to sort of leap to the, the, the potential judgment or discernment that they may have some good reason or they're 
angry and wanting to be first, and I'm so glad that I don't have to be like that. You know, it's it, one way or another, I can usually get myself out of it. But, you know, when, when you've got that physiological fear going, um, it's, it's hard to shift sometime quick, but, but sometimes there is quickly. No, see, when you think about it, I understand what you're saying, Christine, but when you think about it, it's a conditioned response. Uh-huh. It's not any different than Pavlo's dogs, you know, ring the bell and they salivate. There is no actual threat that someone has taken a bit of space from you on the highway. Uh, now, I was thinking of sort of emergency situation. Slam your yeah, brakes that, that's what I was assuming. Yeah. Right, right. You just had somebody rude cut in front of you. Uh-huh. It, it's a bit of an inconvenience. You had to slow some. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm not talking about you. Have, you know, slid sideways in order to avoid an accident. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Just a typical person that cuts in front of you that causes people to become so rage filled uh, you know yeah. what what is that all about well most of it comes from the conditioning as i said mm-hmm. but then you know we accumulate these emotions over time and so anger is always right there just underneath us looking for the slightest stimuli to mm-hmm. precipitate it right. because we haven't dealt with it ever. We've not acknowledged it. And that's just one of the emotions. But being mindful, I can begin to change the context. And as I change the context on each of these so-called aberrant thoughts, Uh as they come in and I change the context, I neutralize them. Mm -hmm. If we do that, and then we become aware of all the psychological tools that are used against us, we actually have the ability to begin to write the content of our subconscious mind. Because the only way you're going to get free will uh-huh. is to take control right. of what's in your subconscious right. mind. So, Eldon, um, when we get back, I'm going to want you to share with our listeners ways in which we can actually become more discerning about that external attempt at control and how we can shift more fully into the driver's seat. More with Eldon Taylor here in just a few moments. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Be unstoppable. Who do executive women count on for up-to-date information on everything from stilettos to being heard in the boardroom? To achieve excellence, you must first take control of your life and develop a successful strategy with the Unstoppable Diva. Tune in to Up or Out with Connie Fife, Mondays 5 p.m. Eastern, as she cuts through the BS to guide you to become bold, connected, and unstoppable. For more information, visit uporout.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engage some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW AM 1150 and Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. For centuries, spiritual traditions have talked about how humans have an energy field, or aura, surrounding them. 
Although skeptical scientists refuted this for decades, science is now beginning to catch up with spirituality. Scientists can actually measure light emanating from living beings, so they can measure the human aura, which in scientific terms is known as the biofield. Many medical practitioners around the world use an instrument to evaluate a patient's biofield for the purpose of diagnosing illness. They understand that imbalanced or insufficient light in a person's energy field indicates a physical or emotional problem. The good news? There are ways to balance and increase your light, resulting in greater well-being. For more information, please check out StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, and Transformation Talk Radio. I am talking today to the wonderful Dr. Eldon Taylor. He's a New York Times bestselling author, and we are talking about making conscious choices or affecting our own subconscious so that others aren't controlling it. You know, Eldon, you're talking about sort of having us as individuals disconnecting from the manipulation that is controlling our subconscious and therefore controlling our conscious decisions. <sighs> okay, awareness helps, but but how do we really sort of disengage from the the, the widespread manipulation? Well, as I said, said, you know, in the last break, the first thing is to become mindful. Mm -hmm. When you become mindful, you stop playing part of the role. I mean, listen, we have uh, something we call OCEAN. uh, It's an acronym for um, the five major big traits, personality traits. Okay. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. Okay. Now, everybody knows what demographics are. Yeah. So if if someone wants to market the demographics, you know, they, they slice out women, say, 20 to 40 mm-hmm. because of their product, and maybe they further slice it down to income, and maybe they further slice it down to geography. Right. But what they really missed in all of this is something, you know, that is an emerging uh, science, something we now call psychographics. And psychographics looks, uses this ocean uh, model to look at personality characteristics. Now, Cambridge Analytics, and and this is a bit of an aside, but I think it's an important one. Cambridge Analytics uh, used this ocean model and tested all kinds of uh, different variables on different personality types, Mm -hmm. providing this data to President Trump's campaign. Oh, wow. There are very many people that today, I mean, experts, social psychologists, et cetera, that would tell you the reason he won was because Cambridge Analytics told him precisely what to say to what group. And mm-hmm. how to say it, because it would appeal to them. You could be a liberal, mm-hmm. and he could possibly win your vote by understanding, well, you're a liberal, but you're also opposed because you're religious to abortion. Uh-huh. So approach this group this way. Mm-hmm. You see, so okay. by combining them. Now, here's the thing, and the reason I bring it up. Being mindful it includes understanding these tactics. If okay. you get on Facebook or social networking today, uh-huh. you're going to see somebody's got a, a survey, you know, see what Hollywood actress or actor you're most like, uh-huh. what animal characteristic or trait is strongest in you, what, you know, and on and on and on. Sure. Yeah. These simple little quizzes reveal your personality Mm -hmm. and they go into metadata banks and these metadata banks then begin to skew you using psychographics combined with demographics so that 
there there is nothing innocent about the information you're giving away. Wow. It's going to turn around and come back, and you need to understand that. All mm-hmm. right. Now, okay. with that out of the way, I just needed to finish that conversation from the last segment. Let's go to proactive living. Yes. I'm becoming mindful. I, you know, I, I've learned how I can be plumbed, and I, I flesh all of this out in my book, Choices and Illusions, including all the little tricks they do. What am I going to do to have a better life today? Right. In my view, I have developed what, over the course of the last nearly 40 years of research now, something I call the four-corner philosophy. And what's that? Okay. <clears throat> the first one is based on a study that we ran at the Utah State Prison back in the 80s. There, a friend of mine said to me, can we use this technology you've developed, InterTalk, to uh, interdict uh, some of the violence, lower hostility and aggression, maybe increase reflectivity, and even affect the recidivity rate? Uh So we went out to the Utah State Prison. We ran some very fancy psychometrics, computer-enhanced, and... We didn't learn anything new. We had high scores in self and social alienation. Mm-hmm. Their, you know, their low self-esteem uh, was compensated for by way of looking at society as being worth less than them. Right. Society had done it to them. They were a victim. Uh-huh. And as a victim, they blame society for where they were. Ah, but for the grace of God, there go you. You know, uh-huh. if your daddy had been the alcoholic, if your mommy had been the prostitute. And the stories were, by and large, exaggerated. But they had a rationalization for why they had behaved the way they did. What we yes. did at the prison system was create an interdiction that was based on this first principle of forgiveness. Today, it's just called the forgiveness set by everybody. Uh But what I did in the early 80s was I forgive myself, I forgive all others, I am forgiven. We put Uh that together with a boilerplate of just some healthy self-esteem affirmations, Uh use that as the interdiction, because once you forgive, you can't blame. Right. As long as you blame, you have effectively tied yourself up. Right, I mean, right. You, you continue to, to be a victim. Up. You continue to be a victim. That's right, and and you're and you're fixed in time. That that space in uh-huh. time remains there. And so, if you're going to become self responsible, which is the second corner of the four corner philosophy, okay, you you have to give up the blame. Yes. If you if you remain the victim, you're not responsible. Right. And as long as you're not responsible, you're not proactive, you're unable to move forward, Mm -hmm. period. Right. Now, I define self-responsibility this way, Christine. It's much more than the Emerson uh, essay on self-reliance. Self-responsibility to me is whenever I'm in a situation, whatever the situation might be, that is uncomfortable, what can I do to change that? Uh How can I personally do something to improve it? I'll tell you a true story. Okay. I moved my offices. This is in the days that I was a practicing criminalist. Uh Moved my offices over to Las Vegas, Nevada. First day there, I went to the post office. Uh It was very hot outside. There were a lot of people inside the post office. The AC wasn't keeping up with the heat. Uh Everyone was nasty foul. The postal clerks were upset. It was just, it was a horrible experience. Right. Uh, when I left, I thought, you know, I'm not going to do this every day. I'm just, you know, I'm going to have to do something to change it or being a bit cheeky, send my secretary to the post office and said, <laughs> all right. So I, I committed myself that for 30 days, I would, every day I went there, I would smile, I would greet people, Uh I would imagine the space filled with light and humor, and I would would do everything that I could to raise the vibration of that post office. Uh Initially, this true story, I mean, people looked at me like I was queer, stupid, dumb, Uh um, you know, and, and, and I... 
got to tell you, it was very, very hard to maintain that cheerfulness the way it was met initially. But before 30 days was up, I'd walk into that post office. The demeanor had changed from everyone. Uh I'd hit that postal clerk. Hi, Doc. What can we do for you today? Uh The entire experience was altered. And that's what I mean by self-responsibility. The third level of this four-corner philosophy is gratitude. Now, if anybody out there would like a quick fix, beginning first thing tomorrow morning on an attitude adjustment, let me tell you how to do that. When you first wake up in the morning, just say to yourself, thank you, thank you, thank you. That repositions the way you look at the world. It's no longer TGIF, Uh uh, no longer, oh, God, i got to go to work today. Uh, You know, thank you, thank you, thank you changes my thinking process. And when you do that, thank you, I want you to put a big smile on your face. You know, fake that smile if you need to, because the brain doesn't know you're faking it. Uh Simply changing the facial expression will release endorphins, the body's natural opiate system. And guess what? You will feel better. That's great. It's a mechanical process. Uh Okay. Research on gratitude now, and there are more than two dozen studies, have shown that a gratitude attitude increases your well-being, uh, your longevity, uh-huh. uh, it enhances relationships, right. and finances. Uh-huh. The world changes when you have a gratitude attitude. Yes. You and I were talking off air about an automobile incident that you had. Right. Uh, that maybe there was some intervention, I think probably yes. was. Yes, some I, I'm, I'm quite sure. Yes, there was. But I was this jaded criminalist at one time in my life that didn't trust anybody and didn't see a, a potential in human beings that I see today. This, right, this, right. Un, you know, this, you know, unlimited potential for happiness and joy. And All right, anyway, uh, for reasons that are beyond the scope of this show, I decided to change my life. Uh-huh. So I sought out someone who could assist me. And on this given day, <clears throat> Connie said to me, Eldon, If you're going to change, you're going to have to change your attitude. And you know that. So what I want you to do from here on in is whenever something bad happens, I want you to say to yourself, you know, I can't wait to see what good comes from this. Uh Because there is good in everything. If you just change that focus, you'll find the good. It may take a while, but begin to think that way. I said, Connie, that's a ridiculous statement. Do you know Uh what I've seen? I mean, you know, maybe I should take you out to the prison sometime, Mm, you know. Look, and she said, just try it, will you? So I left her. I went back to my office. My office was in a strip mall at that time, and as I pulled into that strip mall, I had to pass this restaurant that was right out, and the strip mall was horseshoe-shaped, smack in the middle. Uh And as I passed this guy in an old, crappy pickup truck backed into the side of my car. Oh, dear. Okay? So yep. I had a brand new Cadillac Eldorado Barrette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ouch, yes. I stopped. <laughs> I said to myself, I cannot wait to see what good comes from this. <laughs> I got out of the good car. For you. The fellow in the truck was wagging a finger at me, accusing me of hiding my car behind him deliberately, <laughs> so he'd hit me. Now, there happened to be two police officers coming out of the restaurant. I ended uh-huh. up in the car with one of them, and we were roaring, laughing. Uh-huh. At this. Every time I'm able to share that story today, I still get a big smile. I still, uh-huh. you know, it. I am so glad she gave me that tip, uh-huh. because otherwise I could have got out of my car. There could have been some real hostility. Oh, I don't yeah. know where the thing would have gone. Right, but, right. you know, when I think about it today, I'd have this horrible emotion come back up. Uh The fact is the car got fixed, Uh you know, and what I remember instead is the joy of that moment, Uh the humor in that moment. So that 
That's the power of gratitude. I know you've got a break about now, so why don't we just leave them tongue in cheek for the fourth quarter? That sounds good. We'll be back in just a few moments with the fourth quarter of the Four Corner Philosophy of Eldon Taylor. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. What does the word healing mean? Many think that healing merely means eliminating symptoms. However, based on my many years as a healer, I have a much broader perspective on the word. Healing can manifest in a variety of ways, including having physical problems resolved, becoming more emotionally centered, experiencing better relationships, gaining greater clarity, and feeling more spiritually connected. True healing always includes some level of transformation. Whatever form healing takes, there is one commonality, an improvement in quality of life. To me, the highest form of healing goes beyond aligning with wellness. It comes from recognizing our soul's voice and allowing it to speak through us. And in that sense, don't we all yearn to heal into our wholeness? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadya and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here in KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. You know, Eldon, before we continue this conversation, um, can you please share with our listeners how they can connect with you? Well, probably the best way is my website, um, which is Eldon Taylor. That's E-L-D-O-N-T-A-Y-L-O-R, EldonTaylor.com. Of course, you can connect with me on Facebook Uh as Dr. Eldon Taylor, D-R, Eldon Taylor. Um, and, and I love, you know, your comments and feedback, and I try to post, uh, you know, some provocative stuff. Yeah, and I, I, I'd invite everybody out there, be sure you tune in to Provocative Enlightenment on KKNW every Thursday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. Yes, yes. And, 
You know, I really enjoy um, following you on Facebook because you do you do post some interesting things that where it's like, okay, is this real? Uh, what might the agenda be behind this? And and you know, it's it, it gets me thinking. So I yeah, I, I encourage people to follow you on Facebook too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, thank you very much, Christine. Okay, so we got through three of the four corners. What's the fourth corner? The fourth corner is service. You know, mm. I'm going to tell you that you do not build true self-esteem because of the trophies you accumulate, the right. diplomas you hang on your wall, the fellowships you earn, the automobile you own, your your properties, your clothing. True self-esteem is something that's fulfilled within. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. I want to share a story so I can make this point. Okay. Years ago, I had a woman come to me uh, for counseling. She was referred by um, a psychiatrist. Uh She was suicidal and uh, had many episodes of self-mutilation, was on a number of uh, drugs. Uh And uh, when I looked at her intake sheets, I saw um, that her first health care professional was none other than Milton Erickson. Now, in my view, Milton Erickson walks on water. He's the father of neuro-linguistic programming, a great hypnotist, healed himself of incurable diseases, Uh Um, incredible, incredible therapist. So when I looked at that, I felt incompetent. Mm -hmm. What on earth could I possibly do if Milton Erickson was unable to help her? And she had this whole list of therapists that she'd seen. Right. Sometimes synchronicity, inspiration, I'm not sure what it is, just happens. And mm-hmm. in this instance, it happened to me. I decided to do something I'd never, ever done before. I decided that I would see her in what's known as brief therapy uh-huh. for 10 weeks. We would meet once a week for one hour. She could call me if there was any emergencies during the week, but she was going to have homework. And if she refused to do the homework, that was it. Uh We were through seeing one another. Right. Cut it off. Okay. I didn't need her. She didn't need me. And it was delivered in about that way. Mm -hmm. Not any nice wrap it up you know, good bedside manner, but more like a criminalist would talk to someone you were interrogating, mm-hmm. okay? Right. She agreed. Her homework the first week was to get a journal and to write in that journal a good deed that she had to do every single day for someone that she either didn't like or was a stranger. Okay. Okay, she was to write it in the journal in the evening when she went to bed. Mm -hmm. She then was to reflect upon how that might have made that person feel and how it made her feel. Uh Week two, it was two good deeds. Week three, three. We got her up to five good deeds a day. Now, I'm going to tell you the first week or two, some of the good deeds were kind of measly. Right, right. But she did these good deeds, and as she did them, she started doing more of them. And what happened with this woman over 10 weeks was remarkable. I'll never, ever forget it. By the end of 10 weeks, her psychiatrist was amazed. He Uh was taking her off of the meds. Uh, Her entire attitude about herself had changed. You see, to begin with, The notion of suicide or self-mutilation is based on self-worth. Right. She she had a history, and it was a a tragic history, Uh but she didn't feel she had the right to live. Uh Her sister had died because of her, or Uh she blamed herself for it. Uh Actually, you know, it was a set of circumstances that she couldn't have avoided. Mm -hmm. All right? Right. But her sister, to her should have been the one to live. She should have been the one to die. Right, right. Guilt. So she was Survival yeah, guilt, yeah. guilt-ridden and, and no self-esteem. But as she began to do these good deeds, she began to become worth 
right. something. Right. What happened was the realization that her life could make a difference. Mm-hmm. It could make it easier for others. Yes. When she put her head on that pillow at night, she'd get that warm, fuzzy feeling that feeling that my life made a difference. In this day, I was able to help. I was able to contribute. I was able to make the world better in some small way. Right. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. You can be a plumber. You can be a doctor. You can be an attorney, electrician. If you change your attitude and you're not going out just to fix a faucet leak and get your money and get on to the next faucet leak. Uh-huh. But rather you're there to solve a problem for this person. Right. You really care about this person. You're there to help them, to service them, mm-hmm. to solve their problem. Two things are going to happen. Quickly, One, quickly you're going to learn you're going to love your job. Two, you're going to find that everybody wants you to be your plumber. That's right. You know, Ellen, this time has flown by, and these, that last story was very powerful. Thank you for sharing it. And I always appreciate you sharing your wisdom. And again, um, you can reach uh, Eldon at E-L-D-O-N-T-A-Y-L-O-R.com, EldonTaylor.com. Thank you, Eldon. Thank you, Christine. Good luck on everything. I love what you do. Thank you, and thank you so much for joining us here today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www. Dot stellarreflections.com and for weekly topics visit www.transformationtalkradio.com